Angel, and it's a special night for a couple of reasons. Marcus Stroman will make his first home start of the 2015 season here tonight. And I can tell you, Pat, he is chomping at the bit. Yeah, you know, he's going to be excited, I think, for this game. But, but I think he's the type of guy who looks forward to these types of games. I think he rises to the, the occasion and these the big stage type of games like this. There's a difference between nervous and there's a difference between being excited. There's not a nervous bone in his body. I think he's very excited. you hear the word the it factor Marcus Stroman has the it factor Tori Lovello is the interim manager for the Boston Red Sox this will be the final season series between these two ball clubs they're eight and eight in their season matchups take a look at the Red Sox lineup for Tori Lovello Xander Bogarts the 22 year old has had a heck of a year he's riding a six game hit streak he's reached base in 15 straight games He's quickly becoming one of the best young players in all of baseball. Then right behind him, how about Big Poppy, David Ortiz, his last 17 games. He's hit 375, including a pair of home runs on Saturday to give him 500 for his career. He now has 501 as he hit one Wednesday night in Baltimore. Well, I think the Blue Jay fans didn't expect to see this right here. Marcus Stroman throwing a pitch here at Rogers Center, but he's going to get ready for his first home start of 2015. He made a couple of rehab outings, one at Lansing, one at Buffalo, and then he had that start in New York, and I thought he threw the ball really well. Five innings, they didn't have a hit through four of those first four innings against Stroman, then a couple of infield hits and a three-run home run by Gardner. That finished him off, but it was a long day for Stroman. I think he ran out of gas after those five innings, and I'm sure we're going to see a much better and a much stronger Strowman tonight. Yeah, it's Stro September for sure, and he is anxious to make this start. Marcus is seven and two in his career here at Rogers Center as a starting pitcher at a 198 earned run average, and you can see everybody in the house is excited for Marcus Strowman to make this start here tonight at Rogers Center. Marcus is 24 years old. He was the first round pick of the Blue Jays in 2012, and he is about set to throw his first pitch at home. First pitch is in the dirt, and we are underway. The Blue Jays have a three and a half game lead over the New York Yankees. We mentioned the Red Sox and the Jays have split the first 16 games they played this season. This is Mookie Betts, and there's a breaking ball for a strike. You know, that's the one thing that I was really impressed with Marcus is his ability to throw that breaking ball. There, again, there was nothing wrong with his arm, but he was snapping off some benders against the Yankees. He also had a very good sinking fastball. They got him 10 ground ball outs over his five innings. Mookie Betts is hot. 52 hits in his last 33 games. Outside, it's three and one. I think this is going to be a heck of a, a challenge, I think, for Marcus because Boston has been swinging it since the All Star break. They're right up there with everybody else in the American League at scoring runs. It's going to be a great test for him. the Red Sox. Have scored five or more runs in nine of their last 13 games. They've averaged 6.4 runs over that stretch. Stroman added a two seam fastball last year and he mastered it in a very short period of time. There are certain people who can spin the baseball. You can make a slider go one way. You can make a curveball go another way. You can also make that two seamer like you were talking about. Buck. I think Marcus has that. You have to have strong hands. You have to have strong wrist and you have to have athletic ability. Marcus has every one of those characteristics. Another three two pitch. Another sinker tapped foul by Mookie Betts. Marcus threw 78 pitches in his only start of the season in New York. It was the second game of a doubleheader. 
And because they went into extra innings, he had to start and stop his warm up process about three times. Strike three call. Strowman strikes out bets. Good start for Marcus Stroman. The fastball's got a lot more movement on it than we saw last year. Watch this thing come back and freeze Mookie Betts. Good job by Russell Martin to hold it there, but that's a two-seamer. It almost works like a screwball from a right-hander. Comes back, and you don't think Marcus is fired up? This is Brock Holt. You're right about Stroman. He's able to channel all of his energy in the right direction, and he told me Wednesday in Atlanta, he said, man, I can't wait to start at home. He said, that atmosphere has been special, and I've only seen it from afar. Ground ball. Smoke wide at first. We'll flip to Stroman. Two down. Well, Stroman elevates the energy level for everybody, and the defense, they're on their toes tonight as well. Left fielder Ben Revere has been a great addition to this lineup. Kevin Pilar has had a great season defensively. Bautista, he is as good as any right fielder in the game. Donaldson and Goins on the left side. Pennington and Smoke on the right side. And the veteran Russell Martin behind the plate for 24-year-old Marcus Stroman. Only the second year in the big leagues for Marcus Stroman. So Russell Martin's been around a long time. He's going to help him to keep calm and keep focused, channel that excitement and that energy in the right spot. I think Russell has done a great job catching everybody this season. The Blue Jays have improved dramatically with Russell Martin's presence behind the plate. Andrew Bogart's quickly behind 0 and 2. Three twenty one on the season. Bogart's had the third most hits in the majors. With Russell Martin coming into the Blue Jays this season, the team ERA went from 22nd in the majors to 12th. What a tandem he and Deanna Navarro have become for the Blue Jays. Strowman, little comeback. Marcus Strowman retires the side in order in his first inning at Rogers Center this season. Tone for this ball game. Take a look at the lineup for the Blue Jays. They went six and four on the ten game road trip. Top of the order, Ben Revere. He's been a nice addition to the top of the order. Josh Donaldson has enjoyed his time against the Red Sox this season. 353 against Foster with eight extra base hits. And then down in the fifth spot. Justin Smoke's in the lineup tonight because he's hit well against Rick Porcello. It's a good matchup for Smoke. He's got five hits, but three. Have left the ballpark. He's also driven in seven runs with those five hits. This is a tough matchup for the Blue Jays. Rick Porcello is going to get ready for his 25th start of the season. Pay no attention to those numbers. Eight and 12 with a 506 earned run average. Porcello is on a nice little roll. His last four starts, he's been three. He's been pitching well. He's three and one. 
His fastball command has been a lot better. The sinker is back. Blue Jays are going to have to make him elevate it today. Ben Revere nearly always takes that first pitch, and this is a strike. Ball on the strike. Revere has the most hits in baseball since August 20. He has 40 hits. That's two more than Mookie Betts of the Red Sox. This is pulled down the right side, but that's going to be a foul ball. He's been doing it by knocking the ball all over from foul line to foul line. He's had his chair of infield hits. He's had some extra base hits. He's dumped some balls into the outfield. Ever since they put him in that leadoff spot, it's almost like he found a second gear. Two and two. Breaking ball slipped out of Porcello's hand. Josh Donaldson waiting on deck. But there's a good change up down and away. Revere strikes up. Let's take a look at the Boston defense, and they have some good looking young players on defense. Rusty Castillo's 27 and left. Jackie Bradley Jr. can go get him in center, and Mookie Betts is now playing right. Holt, Bogarts, Rutledge, and Shaw from third to first, and another youngster, Blake Schleihart, behind the plate. He's just 23 years old. Rutledge getting the start at second base. That is for Dustin Pedroia. They want to give him some time off of his turf. Dustin missed 58 games with a hamstring injury, so Rutledge will get the start at second base tonight. Capable veteran. He's played all over the place. This is 14th start at second for Boston. Donaldson behind 0 and 1. Tried to check his swing and went around. Josh hit his 39th home run last night in his final at bat in Atlanta. That gave him 120 RBIs. That's the most in baseball. It's also the eighth highest total all time for the Blue Jays franchise. First Blue Jay batter to drive in 120 since Jose Bautista in 2010. Trying to go upstairs and didn't get it high enough. Donaldson goes the other way. We have seen him do this consistently all season long with two strikes. That was an 0-2 pitch from Porcello, and he will throw a lot of fastballs. Blue Jays just saw him about 10 days ago, so they know all about him. That's an elevated fastball that just doesn't get up enough, and it doesn't get in enough to Donaldson. And just inside outs that ball for a base hit. His home run yesterday, I thought, did a lot of a lot of things for him. It gave him a lot of confidence after a rough road trip. Yeah, he looked a little bit fatigued as he went to the plate for that final at bat in Atlanta, and that certainly pumped him up. Jose Bautista takes one downstairs. Bautista's had a terrific season. Discount the 250 average. Look at the damage he's done. And that's when he gets to swing the bat. Pitchers have been very careful with him. Jose has taken 96 walks. He's had 35 home runs, driven in 102, and he scored 99 runs. Ball on the strike. One of the things that Porcello did the last time he faced the Blue Jays, again about 10 days ago, when he pitched into the eighth inning and only gave up three or runs, threw a lot of fastballs. And a lot of fastballs to the right handers in. Really challenging those right handed hitters to get the head out. Porcello just checking in on Donaldson. Josh will pick his spots very effectively. He's six for six in stolen bases. Bautista for me right now is seeing the ball very well. Even he tracked that low strike. He's got a pretty good idea what he's looking for. He's been hot lately. Ground ball base hit. Uh, 
I don't care who you are as a pitcher. When you get two, three, and four in this Blue Jays lineup, you got your work cut out for you. Well, when you got this kind of production that the Blue Jays have, they're all good hitters. The average might not show it now, but they all have a plan when they get to that plate, and they're going to produce for you. We saw in Atlanta the impact that Encarnacion has on this trio right here when he did not play. You can get through one of them, maybe two of them, but it's awfully tough to get through all three of them. Jose Bautista, that at bat was super. He was looking for that breaking ball, and he sat on it and got it. Donaldson in ahead of the tag at second. You mentioned in kind of shown when he did not play in Tuesday's game in Atlanta. Donaldson and Bautista went 0 for 8. They struck out four times. And he's back in the lineup. It's a different story. We mentioned a trio of 30 homer 100 RBI players. It's the fifth time in history that three right handed hitters have put up those numbers in the same season. Edwin reminded himself to stay up the middle. You could see that. Yep. Bottom hand saying, don't get around it now. Just stay up the middle. That's where a lot of right handed hitters get into trouble, right? When they start rotating on the ball instead of keeping their hands inside of it. That's why he is such a good hitter. And it's Tori Lavello who told me in Boston, he said, of all the hitters the Blue Jays have in their lineup, Edwin is their finest hitter. I've watched him for a few years, I coached him for a few years. He's their best hitter. When you look at the RBI leader since the 1st of August, Josh Donaldson is first with 47. Then Encarnacion is right behind him with 44. The dog days of August didn't affect these two. Pat, it's unsettling for a starting pitcher to make those close pitches and watch the hitter take him with so much confidence. You know I asked Brooke Jacoby about that today. I said Brooke how does your sluggers how, how do they have such a good idea and they're able to stay off of those pitches he said they do their homework. They have an idea what the pitchers are going to try and do to them but they're very disciplined and, and they see the ball quickly. Ground ball this could be two. Rutledge to Bogarts back to the first it is Porcello. Uses that sinking fastball to get the double play. Blue Jays get a couple of base hits, but leave a base run. We'll go to the second. No score. First game of the three game set against Boston and Pat Marcus Stroman went out through 14 pitches retired to side in order 
And it really looks like he's in control of his body and he can really manipulate the baseball early in this game. I think he's going to have to because the Boston Red Sox come in here offensively very hot, just as hot as the Toronto Blue Jays offense. They're deep. They've got a lot of good hitters. And against the left-handers, especially the first guy Marcus is going to face here in the second inning, David Ortiz is going to have to use, I think, that two-seam fastball, that sinker, just to keep that ball out of the air. David Ortiz. Pounds that ball off his foot, and there's the effect of that two seam sinker. <laughs> Big Poppy fouled it off right off his foot, and he's going to try to walk it off. Well, you're not kidding. Ortiz likes to elevate the ball, obviously. He's got that high leg kick. Watch this one right off the toe. And Big Poppy felt that one. Two seamer. Look at it. Tough to get on top of that one. Ortiz has been a nemesis for the Blue Jays. He has 59 career home runs against the Jays, more than any player in franchise history. And he also has 178 RBIs. He's tied with Alex Rodriguez for the most RBIs. 39 of those 59 buck are right here in this ballpark. I mean, he has been a terror when it comes to swinging the bat here in this ballpark. Uh, he got hit pretty hard. He's really trying to walk off the effects of that foul ball. Ortiz has 35 home runs now. Six seasons of 35 or more home runs in a Red Sox uniform. That's the most such seasons in Red Sox history. He's also trying to drive in 100 runs again. And that would be the ninth time that he has done that. He's got 97 this year. Breaking ball, he fouled it up. If he drives in a hundred, and that seems like a foregone conclusion, he will join the great Ted Williams with nine 100 RBI seasons with the Red Sox. Popped up, Donaldson, the lone defender on the left side of the infield, waits for it. Ortiz is retired. Well, Marcus has made one start this year. That was in New York. So let's take a look at the scatter report and what he threw in that game. Fastball, just 53% of the time, it's got a great curveball. It's got a lot of bite to it. It's late breaking. He's able to spin that ball. He's cutter, the sinker, the slider, the changeup. So a little bit of everything that he used. Remember, he didn't give up his first hit to the Yankees until they had an infield hit in the fifth inning. And that first hit was a product of Cliff Pennington slipping and losing his footing. An infield hit. This is Travis Shaw. Shaw's the first baseman. He's just 25 years old. He's got a little power. He's had 11 home runs already since coming up from the minors. 3 and 0 to Shaw. Here's Nick Castillo, the left fielder, is on deck. I asked Russell Martin about Strowman. Martin caught him for the first time in his start in New York. I said, Russell, what was your impression of Marcus Strowman? He said, man, he can really spin it. It's the first thing out of his mouth. And there's a high strike. I said, does he remind you of anybody? He said, yeah. Pedro Martinez. That's pretty high praise. He said his arm is really quick and he can really manipulate the baseball. Quick arm. That, that's a great point. A quick arm. That, that's how you were able to get the ball up there quickly and you're able to spin the baseball when you've got that type of, of arm. Pedro Martinez, huh? I hope he's half as good as Pedro. I think the Blue Jays would take that. There's a one out walk. That's the first base runner to reach against Stroman. Here's Nick Castillo, the left fielder. One out. David Ortiz still getting attention over on the bench after fouling that ball off his foot. Not much protection in those shoes no. these days. They're so light and they're made with. 
very light material. There's no protection whatsoever when you foul a ball off your foot. Stroman's wow. not getting much of a strike zone early on, and Russell Martin's going to have to go to work. Home plate umpire is Mark Ripperger. You got to stay with that breaking ball because it's so late in its break. You got to stay with it. It looks like he's thrown a couple of pitches up in the strike zone that hit the the area. Pat, that's a great point. And oftentimes, when an umpire hasn't seen a pitcher before. And he's got exceptional stuff like Strowman. The catcher will have to give him a heads up. Hey, stick with that ball. It'll come back in the zone. Two and one. Well, I think one thing that Mark is going to find out is the Red Sox, they're going to take a lot of pitches. They're, they're going to make him work, and it would be a good idea to jump ahead early in the count and have some short at bats. Ground ball. Goins comes after it. He's going to go to second, get the lead runner, and that's all they'll get. Boy, Goins and Pennington have done a nice job in the middle of the diamond defensively. Smart, smart play right there from Goins. You got to know the runner. Travis Shaw doesn't run as well as Castillo. This would have been a close play if he threw the ball to first base. But Shaw doesn't run like Castillo. You get that lead runner, you keep that guy out of scoring position. So Stroman continues to work out of the stretch Castillo at first. Like Swihart, the catcher. Swihart's a switch hitter. Swihart's done a nice job for the Red Sox, and he lost their young catcher in spring training. And he is back behind the plate. Bouncing ball, smoke will go to the bag. Strowman is out of it. The one out walk doesn't mean anything. Red Sox strand the base runner will go to the bottom of the second. Justin Smoke will start things off. Twenty sixteen Honda Pilot, proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Another great crowd on hand here at Rogers Center, and that's been the way it has been for about a month now with this revamped ball club in first place, trying to wrap up their first postseason appearance since '93. Twenty two years, the longest drought in professional sports. Not going to the postseason. And the fans, they've bought in. The big smoke will lead things off for the Blue Jays. Justin Smoke mentioned his numbers against Rick Porcello. He's 5 for 13, but he's hit three home runs. You're going to get a fastball, I think, especially early in the count by Porcello. 
Then he's going to try and throw that the curveball. Then he's going to try and try and throw a changeup. When they go through scouting reports against that night's pitcher, they talk about pitches with, especially with two strikes, that he tries to throw in the strike zone. And a lot of times, when he gets to two strikes like this count here, he'll go to the curveball, but it's going to be out of the strike zone on purpose, or he's going to throw a changeup. So they go through the game plans and they say, okay, now be ready for this pitch. And he might not throw it in the strike zone. That time he threw a fastball right down the middle. Snuck that fastball in there on smoke. Two strikeouts for Porcello. That's how the Blue Jays start off here in the second. Throwing way more fastballs. That one right down the middle. Two of them in the same spot. And it locks up Justin Smoke. Russell Martin. Also had a nice road trip, including a four RBI game in Atlanta. Martin hit a deep home run to center field in the ninth inning on Wednesday night. He also had a big two run double in that four run first inning. That set up David Price very effectively as the Blue Jays spotted him four runs in the first. Russell Martin's father is here. Russell Sr. came over from Montreal. He's excited to be here for this series. Chopped off the plate. Holt cuts in front of the shortstop, and Martin is retired. Two down. Well, let's take a look at that scouting report for Rick Porcello. He seems to finally be coming into his own after a very rough beginning to his season. He's been hot lately. He's been using the fastball more. You can see right there he's using it 66% of the time. It's a low 90s fastball with some movement. He'll mix in a curveball, a slider, and a changeup. But it's been uh, fastball, sinker, Curveball basically over his last four starts, and he hasn't thrown less than seven innings in any of those last four. This is Ryan Goins who takes a pitch up and away for a ball. Goins batting 245 for the season. You mentioned Porcello before the All Star break, he was five and nine. With a 590 earned run average, and the league was hitting 297 against him. After the All Star break, 3 and 3, he already down to 312, and the opponents are hitting 250. He spent some time on the disabled list after the All Star break, and since he has come back, he's been on fire. He went on the DL for the first time in his career on August 2nd. He was on the DL for 24 days. He had right tricep inflammation and. Dory Lavella wants to come out and ask about a possibility of a foul tip. And he got the umpire's answer, and he'll return to the dugout. But it looked kind of odd. It went off the catcher's glove, and I think that's probably the sound that Lavella heard. Yeah, that that's exactly it. it. There was a tick, and I'm sure that's what Dory heard, but that was the tick of the glove. Three and one to Goins. Story is filling in for John Farrell, who is battling cancer. Bounce ball in the dirt, and Shaw will flip to pour some. The inning is over. We've played two innings here at Rogers Center. It's a scoreless ball game.
to batter, and that's the only base runner that the Red Sox have had. Then you're talking about the Blue Jays and how they are situated with their young arms, and they are in good shape. Yeah, they certainly are. Roberto Soto just 23 years old. Aaron Sanchez is 23, and then Marcus Stroman, the graybeard of the bunch, at 24 years old. Guys who were signed and developed within the organization are going to play key roles, I think, for the Blue Jays here the last couple of weeks of this season, and they've had fine years. Well, and it's important too, and to note that they're homegrown. They have grown up in the organization. Drew Hutchinson, who is now down in that bullpen, he too is a homegrown pitcher. Marcus Stroman, the starter tonight, just 24 years old. Last year, Stroman was 11 and six. He appeared in 26 games, made 20 starts for the Blue Jays, and a very respectable 365 earned run average. I think that's how you have to pitch the Red Sox right there. Go right after them, especially early in the count. They're going to bank on you falling behind. Breaking ball, and Josh Rutledge gets a piece of it. You know, that has been their M.O. over the last several seasons. They're always among the leaders in most pitches per plate appearance. They've had veteran hitters in the past, but now they're changing their profile a little bit. Well, how do you diffuse that? Throw strike one. Strike one. And, and do it what Marcus did right there. First two pitches you can see right there on pitch tracker in red. Right there. Strike one, strike two. Broken bat liner right to Donaldson. Josh Donaldson, very athletic at third base, timed his jump perfectly, and Rutledge is retired on the liner. Slider, breaking ball, it hangs up there just a little bit too much. He gets it off the end of the bat, so he's going to shatter that thing. But Donaldson gets up and makes a nice play. Jackie Bradley Jr. This will be a great advantage of this right off the end. That ball is hooking, so it's coming down to him. And Marcus appreciates the effort. Jackie Bradley Jr. was hitting the ball well the last time the Blue Jays faced him in Boston. He has cooled off since. He's just won for his last 27. He was hitting everything that the Blue Jays were throwing up there. They tried to throw the ball away. He pepper it off the wall in left field. They try to come in and he would pull it to right field. He strikes out. Russell Martin gets on it quickly and throws to smoke to complete the strikeout. Second strikeout for Stroman, second out of the inning. You know, and once again, there's the. Uh, the ability to get ahead of them and then get them out on a breaking ball out of the strike zone. Jump ahead early and you put the hitter in the fence mode. Well, he's in the swing mode and he'll get chasing those borderline pitches. And because Stroman can spin the ball so well, in the words of Russell Martin, once you get ahead of him, then you can just toy with him. Mookie Betts has a 17 game hit streak against the Blue Jays. Goes back into September of 2014. Pretty much sums up the attitude of Marcus Stroman. He was on an island after that injury, but he never got down. You know, if, if you play on a team, and you're injured, you're on the disabled list. That's a bad feeling, isn't it? You just don't. You don't feel like anything. You don't feel like you're part of the team. You're. You're not part of even the organization. There's a base hit for Mookie Betts that extends his hit streak to 18 straight games against the Blue Jays. Well, there is Devin Travis, and he got some. Finality to his shoulder injury. He's going to have exploratory surgery next Wednesday to find out the root of the problem in that left shoulder. And you know what? It's easy to forget what an impact he had on this team, but we shouldn't. Devin Travis was the American League Rookie of the Month in April. And a terrific start to his season. off to a great start. And unfortunately for him, I believe it was July 28th before the Blue Jays made all of those moves 
that's when he swung through that pitch after hitting a home run and re injured that shoulder, and he hasn't played since. Talk about being on an island and feeling not feeling part of the of the team. That's got to really be hurting them. And there's Michael Saunders as well, and his season got off to a terrible start before it even began. It was over. He injured his knee before spring training started in Dunning. Devin Travis finishes up the season batting 304. Played 62 games, had eight home runs, and drove in 35 runs. He was a terrific player. And now he's going to find out what's causing his problems in his shoulder. 3 1 count to Brock Holt. Keep your eye on Mookie Betts right here. Three and one, two outs. They will probably start that runner here. Betts has 19 stolen bases this season. There he goes. He got a late break. Russell Martin's throw is a good one. He had him. The 25th time Russell Martin has done down a base stealer. Mookie Betts had 19 stolen bases. He'd have been caught just five times, but Russell Martin nails him with another strike to second. Mookie Betts gets a bit of a slow break, and Russell Martin takes advantage of it. Throws a strike to Goins to end the inning. Center on the weekend of September 26th and 27th. It is Blue Jays Fan Appreciation Weekend presented by Allstate. The Blue Jays host the race that weekend and you'll have fun in-game activities and prizes to be won all weekend long. Buck. There should be a great week in the final two games of this 2015 season. Final two regular season games I must mention. See it's Kevin Pillar. He's batting eight. Tonight. It'll be Pilar Pennington and then back to the top of the order, Ben Revere. There's a base hit that may have tipped the glove of Brock Holt. Pilar's headed for second. And he'll get there with a leadoff double here in the third. For Pilar, number 25 of the season, his 25th double. You know, all year long you can see what players are trying to do to improve themselves. And one of the things that Kevin Pilar is trying to do is that ball's right off the glove of Hole to stay inside the ball just a little bit more with his hands, and he does that. Instead of rotating. He's going to take the hands inside the ball, and that's going to keep that ball foul fair down the left field line. But you work on things, and you do things, and you're up and you're down. And 
He's just learning to hit at the major league level. I think there's a lot of potential in Pilar. Kevin Pilar has hit wherever he's played. It's just taken him a while to get acclimated to big league pitching. Biff Bennington bunts it out in front of home, and Swihart looked at third. But Pilar advances on the sack bunt. One down, man at third. Let's check it with Jamie Campbell. Jamie, thank you very much. And it's interesting how much the Mets have improved. When you look at the most runs per game after the All Star break, the Mets are second to the Blue Jays. They're scoring 5.46 runs per game. And they have tied up the Yankees tonight. Yankees are in tough in that three game series yeah, at City Field. Very tough. Yoannis Cespedes. That's all I'm going to say about the Mets <laughs> offense. <laughs> this is Ben Revere. The infield is back with one out. Ben Revere, he can take advantage of that. Ground ball should score. Pull a ground ball to anybody but the pitcher and the third baseman. There's a ground ball. Pilar is coming home and he will score. Good job by Pilar breaking on contact. He picks up an RBI for Ben Revere. A little surprised that they played the infield back. You've got a ground ball type of pitcher and Forsell who's got a great sinking fastball. If you want to play the infield back, play the middle back to play the corners in. If they did, they would have had a shot at the plate, but Travis Shaw realizes he has no shot at Pilar. Blue Jays are first to score. I was very surprised they played it back. Pennington sacrifice bunt contributes to the first run of the ball game, but Revere's a contact guy. He's not going to hit it out of the ballpark, and he picks up an easy RBI, puts the bat on the ball. One nothing Blue Jays. This is Donaldson, a little swinging bunt up the third baseline. Holt lets it roll foul. The Blue Jays have now scored 807 runs. They're the only team in baseball to score 800 runs, and the first team since Boston in 2013 to score 800 runs. There are 10 teams in baseball that haven't scored 600 yet. Is that good? That's pretty good. That's a pretty good offense. Donaldson with a 1 1 count takes a strike. Well, the Blue Jays have broken out on top. The Jays have been terrific at home over their last 24 games here at Rogers Center. They have a 19 and 5 record. That's why that home field advantage is so important. Yeah, that's why they're playing not just to get into the playoffs, but have the best record in the American League. Donaldson checks his swing. Full count, two outs. Jose Bautista had a base hit his first time up. Chopped towards short. Bogarts has a strong arm in time, but the Blue Jays take a one nothing lead. Kevin Pillar with the leadoff double sacrifice bunt and a ground down. one nothing Blue Jays.
Sportsnet. Presented by the all-new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Blue Jays have one nothing lead, but let's go back to the top half of the third inning and how it ended. And catchers need help when they try to defend against the stolen base. Watch how long it takes Marcus Stroman to deliver the ball home. You were talking about the it factor. Well, that's part of being it. You got a 3-1 count. I think he felt like Betts was going to try and steal, so he held the ball just a little bit longer, took the air out of Mookie, and he got a very slow jump at first base, giving Russell Martin a chance to throw him out. So they gunned down Mookie Betts, and then Brock Holt, who was at the plate when the inning ended, goes after the first pitch, and he grounds out. Russell Martin, we mentioned, that's the 25th base stealer he's thrown out this season. The Blue Jays, you talk about improvement. They went from 28th in the majors last season at gunning down base runners to first. They're throwing out base runners at the rate of 41.5%, while the major league average is 29. Can you give an assist to the pitcher right there? Absolutely. Because that's an assist by Marcus holding that ball and freezing that runner. Mookie Betts got a little bit slower jump at first base to give Martin a chance. Stroman jumps ahead of Bogarts. Bogarts grounded out to the pitcher. Hit one right back to the mound his first time up. He can hit. Hit that high breaking ball into right. Bogarts is aboard. That's hit number 176 for Xander Bogarts. Can he ever hit? I was talking to Victor Rodriguez, their assistant hitting coach, and he thinks that Xander is just scratching the surface as a hitter. He's learning how to hit this year. Thinks eventually he's going to be a 20 home run type of shortstop. He's 22. He won't turn 23 until October. This is David Ortiz. Goes after the first pitch. Pennington goes to Josh Donaldson. They've got plenty of time, and Donaldson knew it. Boy, he took his time around the bag. He got out of the base runner's way and threw a strike for first. They turned seven double plays in the three-game series in Atlanta. This is the first here for Marcus Stroman. A five-pitch inning. in those big comfy green chairs in the TD Comfort Zone. Tonight we recognize guests of TD. Meanwhile, we look over at another jam-packed WestJet flight deck and remind you about the home run contest, which is now on. If a Blue Jay player hits a home run into the flight deck, your name could be drawn to win 25,000 WestJet dollars. For full contest rules and entry form, visit bluejays.com slash WestJet contest. But Edwin would be my guest to be the first to put it up there. You know what, Barry? I think you can pick several of these Blue Jay hitters. They all have the power to do that. I'm going to go with Justin Smoke. Smoke. Yes, <laughs> that's my guy. Jose Bautista takes one off the plate outside. It's a ball. Jose 
Hit a breaking ball through the left side of the infield for a base hit his first time. Checked his swing on that high breaking ball. Twenty nineteen ten thirteen Mount Crushmore. And they have really put up some gaudy numbers. Look at that high curveball. Easy, folks, easy. Yeah, just <laughs> did that earlier <laughs> to Ben Revere. It's the ball that slipped right out of his hand. Three and one now to Bautista, and what a season he's had. He has just been incredible in his plate discipline. And then go up there and work the pitcher for a walk, and the depth of this lineup really adds to the importance of that. He'll sit on pitches in certain counts. And he got what he was looking for right there. Boy, did he ever. Just off the upper part of the strike zone. More trouble on deck. Another walk. Bautista walks for the 97th time. That sets the table for Encarnacion. Mark Burley working with Darwin Marty saying, you know what? I, how do you hold that changeup? <laughs> Kawasaki's <laughs> getting into it too. That four seamer, two seamer, change up. That's the change up grip, and you throw it just like a two seam fastball, but you got to choke it back in your hand. That's pretty interesting. Bouncing ball to third. That eats up hope. Boy, he took a step backwards and then he was done. Once you get back on your heels on this turf, that ball will eat you up. Ideally, you want to get a big hop or a short hop, not an in-between hop. And by backing up, that's exactly what happened to Brock. He got the in-between hop. It looked like it hit the dirt area around that seam at third base. And it came up on him, and he will be charged with his ninth error. Ball right at him. It looked like it was a double play ball, but the ball just took a wicked hop on him. Holt starts all over the field for the Red Sox. That's his ninth air, as Pat mentioned. Here is Justin Smoke. He's got three home runs against Rick Porcello. Smoke caught looking at strike three his first time up. A walk in an air. The Blue Jays got to cash in. Good take from Smoke. It's not 2 and 0. Remember that first at bat, he threw him a lot of fastballs. He ended up striking out on a fastball right down the middle. Carl Willis took over as the pitching coach. He replaced Juan Nieves, who is relieved of his duties. There's a drive that's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Bautista's around third. He's going to score. Here comes Edwin. He's getting the way. The relay from Bogart is not in time. Piece of hitting right there by Justin Sloan. You talked about the numbers he has had against Rick Porcello and the success. They're playing in the pole, but he's going to stay inside that ball. Stays inside and he keeps it on line and slices that ball away from Jackie Bradley, who can really go get it. And Edwin is going to come thundering around the bases for another run. Look how the hands stay inside that ball and he drives it and slices it into the gap for two more runs. The big smoke delivers in the big smoke. Three nothing Blue Jays way outside for Russell Martin. Still nobody out. For smoke. RBI's 50 and 51. 
What a contributor he has been. Great defense, power, and some production now. Now Russell's got to move him over to third. Here comes Hebwin. Remember the last time he slid it home in Atlanta? He got dinged right on the head. This time, no such problems around the plate. Bautista scores his 100th run of the season. Up and in. Going to be a fastball away, and Porcello just he just misses his spot. There's nothing to this. Watch the catcher slide to the outside. He just missed his spot. He's lost a few pitches to the arm side tonight. The breaking ball and that fastball. Martin was looking for something out over the plate, and he was a little bit late reacting. Two now. Justin Smoke, we mentioned he has 51 RBIs. He has had a ratio of 5.58 at bats for every RBI. If he was a qualifier, he'd be just out of the top 10. He has really come through in the clutch. Martin strikes out. Breaking ball down and away gets him. Fastball didn't work for Porcello, so he's going to go to that slider. Threw two good ones, three-one, and then three-two. That's especially effective after Martin had to bail out on that up and in fastball. Yeah, you just don't feel very comfortable leaning out over the plate to go get that slider down and away. Now Ryan Goins, he tapped out to the first baseman to end the second. Big slow breaking ball is up for a ball. Corey Lavello, the acting manager with his pitching coach Carl Willis. Change up. The Red Sox starters have been great. In their last 19 starts, they've gone 10 and 3 with a 270 earned run average. The team has gone 12 and 7. From Ryan Goins is incredible. Look how nice and easy he gets a high changeup and drills this ball to right field. The Red Sox are changing their outfit. That's Mookie Betts in right field. As Goins comes around, he gets a little bit too close to that wall and hits high off the wall by the time he runs that ball down. Ryan Goins is going to slide in the third base with a triple. But his at bats have been so much better. There's Mookie Betts. He's playing right field. Jackie Bradley's back in his natural position in center field. They're just trying to get a feel for what they can do in the outfield. 
but that time he got a little bit too close to the wall. Ryan Jones takes advantage of that and hustles his way to a triple. His third triple of the season has made it a four nothing game. Justin Smoke with a two run double scores on the triple by Goins and that draws the Red Sox infield in with one out and a man at third. Kevin Pillar doubled and scored his last time up. Ball in the dirt. Nice block by Swihart. Well, you mentioned Mookie Betts in right. This is his first start in right field, and he's a second baseman. He made the conversion last year in the minor leagues to center field and did a nice job in center, but it's a different cat out in right. Yeah, and they're just getting a feel for him in right field. And Bradley over in center field. It's a big run at third. The Blue Jays magic number. At five runs you get to five runs the Blue Jays are 71 and 12. Well I thought it was off the plate it's now two balls and a strike. Got a runner at third base and less than two outs. Let's see what the Blue Jays do here. See if they try and steal a run. If they play contact or they make it go through. Shallow left field. Castillo coming in. Goins is tagging and he's going to break and hold. Just wasn't deep enough to test the arm of Castillo. Save during the plumbing, heating, and electrical expert sale. Only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. For nothing, Blue Jays, they've scored three runs here in the bottom half of the fourth. Brian Goins with an RBI triple. One out after the smoke two run double. Pennington pulls it foul. Justin Smoke had a great year. His 14th double of the season, go along with a triple and 16 home runs. But Pennington had a sacrifice bunt in the third that contributed to the first Blue Jays run of the game. Another run out there. Third base, two outs. Pennington's come up with some clutch hits for the Jays since he has been playing every day. Pennington hit a three run a home run on an 0 2 pitch in the fourth inning last night in Atlanta. The home run was a pleasant surprise, but the biggest surprise of all was the fact the two base runners were running 0 2. Fouls off a tough pitch. He has talked about getting some regular playing time, and the, and the timing starts coming around just a little bit more. Been playing every day at second base since Troy Tulowitzki went down. That was in game one of that doubleheader back in New York. High fly ball into right. Mookie Betts coming in. Makes the catch. But the Blue Jays put up a three spot in their half of the fourth. We'll go to the fifth. It's four nothing Blue Jays. Now for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zong.
game yesterday in Atlanta. They made the decision to send Marcus Stroman on an earlier flight back to Toronto just so he could get a good night's sleep. Well, guys, that decision ended up being an even bigger one, knowing what happened with the Blue Jays team charter last night. Their plane had some mechanical difficulties. They had to get another plane in. The Jays did not arrive in Toronto until after 3 o'clock in the morning. Although the way they're playing tonight, you would never know they're going on very little sleep. The bucket was a long night for everyone, including yourself and Pat. It was indeed, Barry, but I'll tell you what, there was never a whimper out of Blue Jays' clubhouse. There was not a hint of complaints. They just kind of went with the flow of things, and it's just another reflection of how good this team chemistry is. That's off the end of the bat. Ben Revere and Kevin Pillar converge on it. It drops in front. Of Revere Pilar's there to back him up. Travis Shaw has a bloop single to start the fifth. They were playing Shaw to pull and they were playing them deep in center field. And when he takes that mighty cut, hits it off the end of the bat, uh, the outfielder is just a little bit behind. Watch Pilar in center field. He reads it, comes hard charging, and then backs off. Castillo bounces it toward third. Donaldson will pick it up in foul ground. That was a good illustration of how you back up a play in the outfield. Revere had the best opportunity to make a catch, and Pilar was right there. Once the ball bounced past the left fielder, Pilar was able to knock it down and keep Shaw at first. That is so important to keep that double play in order. Blue Jays have turned one double play tonight. Bouncing ball. Pennington has to wait. They will get the lead runner, Shaw, and that's all they'll get. Castillo's aboard with the fielder's choice. Same thing happened last time. Those two were involved. Shaw had walked, and there was a ground out, and they got that lead runner. You talk about keeping the double play in order. They do it again. So the catcher, Blake Swihart. He didn't make his major league debut till May 2nd. He was 23 years old, and we mentioned they lost their catcher from last year, Christian Vasquez. Very good looking young catcher. And that ball goes all the way back to the screen, and that'll take the Red Sox out of that double play situation. That ball just took off on Strowman. Should be a wild pitch charged. Marcus change up and he just loses the grip and it ricochets off the home plate umpire's foot. He's trying to get Swihart out in front of that change up so he hit a grounder. He ends up throwing it back to the backstop. They are opening up the roof here at Rogers Center. Swihart laid on that fastball. Swihart was a short snap in high school. He didn't catch till late. His senior season in high school, but they characterize him as being a frontline shortstop, very athletic, and he's making the transition very effectively. Well, you mentioned Christian Vasquez, who would have been their number one catcher if he didn't get hurt in spring training, will be back next year. That's a little looper. That's going to drop for a base hit. Pilar is there, and Castillo had to hold and make sure it dropped safely into center as it did. I've been reading some articles about the Red Sox maybe moving Swihart to a different position, maybe first base, to keep his bat in the lineup. That ball just bloops in front of Pilar, so a couple of bloopers have put runners on first and third with just one out. Josh Rutledge lined out to Donaldson at third. First and third, one out. Stroman checking with Pennington to make sure he's got coverage at second on the comeback. You know what's really interesting about watching Strowman? You don't even get the impression that this is his second start of the season. He 
he is throwing all of his pitches. His delivery is as clean as ever. Little chopper. Stroman has it go by him. Donaldson barehands it and throws up. Rutledge, a run comes in. Donaldson makes another terrific play to gun down Rutledge at first. Well, they're going to challenge this one. They're going to take a look at this one. It looked like Rutledge might have been safe at first base. He's not moving off of the bag. They haven't hit the ball very hard this inning, but they put it in good spots. This one is a little tapper. Donaldson comes quickly. Makes a good throw, but yeah, he's going to be called safe. It's interesting as you watch the foot come down, it's on the base before the ball hits in the glove, and I think you're right, Pat. They'll probably overturn the call on the field. The call on the field is that Rutledge is out. The run comes in no matter what. But instead of there being two outs, it would be one out first and second. Donaldson is as good as any third baseman I've ever seen at making that barehanded play. Well, there were two strikes and he had to move back. And that's going to afford them a chance to be safe at first base. He just had a long way to go to get that ball. It was a perfect swinging bunt. <laughs> just down the third base line. Well, and once again, that illustrates just how much Stroman's ball is moving. We have seen several of those swings go foul. But that one stayed fair. Donaldson had to make a play on it. So the roof is almost back now. That's Brian O'Nora, who is the acting crew chief here. And he is going back to third base. There's a shot of the CN Tower. We can see it for the first time tonight. The ruling on the field is overturned, of course. First and second one out number nine hitter Jackie Bradley Jr. First pitch breaking ball. Time he bounced that breaking ball and struck him out. Now, don't throw a strike here. You don't have to. See if you can get uh, Jackie Bradley to fish for something out of the strike zone. Took a little too much time for Bradley Jr., so he asked for time. Stairs. You know, Stroman was talking about the excitement of pitching in front of a big crowd here tonight at Rogers Center. But last season, he pitched in front of four crowds of 45,000 plus. So he's been in this atmosphere before. Look at the movement on that fastball. He gets Jackie Bradley Jr. for the second time, uh, first time on a breaking ball. You're right, the movement. Little two seamer. Look how that ball spins off that middle finger and the movement that he gets. That was up for a reason. And co combined with that movement, he picks up his third strikeout. Mookie Betts single. Back in the third, he was thrown out by Russell Martin trying to steal second. Fifty three hits now in his last thirty four games. He can really swing it. Now you're talking about Ben Revere the most hits since August twenty first. Mookie's right in that top five. He now has thirty seven. You 
Yeah, the velocity is 93, but the movement makes up for whatever velocity mm -hmm. he might be missing. And where he throws it. Now a little slider away, right? After that fastball. Another fastball on the ground. Goins goes to Pennington to end the end. The Red Sox score a run on a couple of hits. They leave a man aboard. The Blue Jays have a 4 1 lead for Marcus Stroman. But Xander Borgards has really come into his own defensively this season. And I spoke to uh, Red Sox third base coach Brian Butterfield, who's worked closely with Bogarts, and he told me that Bogarts has had tremendous role models in that infield throughout his career. From John McDonald to Steven Drew to Dustin Pedroia to his left and Pablo Sandoval to his right. He says he's a very visual person. So he sees how these guys prepare and he sees how they go about playing the game. Now, one area in particular that he's really worked hard on this offseason is his lateral movement. That first step to his left, that first step to his right, that hard work has really helped his quickness and his range. He's also been very good with the understanding of the game and understanding what it takes to compete on an everyday basis. Uh, in fact, Butterfield told me in his over 30 years of coaching in this game, he said Xander Bogarts is the most improved player from one year to the next that he has ever seen in his career. And that is certainly high praise, Buck, when you consider Butterfield also coached a young man named Derek Jeter when he was with the Yankees organization. Asa, that's a very good analogy. Jeter, certainly a Hall of Fame player, and Xander Bogart, just 22. Brian Butterfield was with Jeter the first year he came to the Yankees. You know, the, the one thing Butter said about Xander is that he's learned how to practice and prepare for a ball game. Well, there's none better than Dustin Pedroia as a mentor. This is a fly ball in the center. No problem for Jackie Bradley Jr. Ben Revere is out. I asked Dustin Bedroy, how come you're not playing tonight? You hit two home runs on Wednesday. You drove in five runs. He goes, they want me to get used to the turf. And that's how he said it. <laughs> yeah. I think he's used to the turf after how many years nine. in the big league? He said, I played nine years. I've been rookie of the year MVP, and i got to get used to the turf. But in reality, he's coming back from a hamstring injury, right. and they don't want to have him play day game and night game back to back. So he gets tonight off. But you talk about a teammate that will help educate some of these young Boston players. That's the majority is top of the list. Josh Donaldson one for two so far. Donaldson hit a two strike pitch into right field his first time. Up. Off the glove of Porcello, there is Bogarts right there to back him up. That's what Hazel May was talking about, the growth of a young player at shortstop, a pivotal position, but he's a two-way player. His defense starting to match his offensive abilities. Look where he starts from. You can see him anticipating that this ball is going to hit, be hit up the middle. You see as Porcello was delivering that pitch, how he shuffled his feet and he started leaning into that play. Those are the kind of things that experience and hard work are going to get you. Porcello jumps ahead of Jose Bautista with a strike. Jose has been on base twice. 
He walked in the fourth and came around to score and when he touched home plate that was the 100th run he has scored this season. He's driven in 100 scored 100 and he's walked 97 times. Coming into this game Jose batting 311 over his last 12 games with four home runs and 13 RBIs. And the way he is starting to take pitches suggests that he might be ready to go through one of those patented hot streaks. You're right. He takes those borderline pitches as if he knew where it was going to be. I say timing could be pretty good for one of those patented hot streaks, don't yeah. you? Yeah, that's like right now. Off the plate, another walk. Walk number 98 for Bautista. The all new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Ninety eight walks that leads the American League one ahead of Carlos Santana of the Cleveland Indians. Mike Trout has eighty three. Edwin's loading up on that back leg. Starting to look dangerous again. Yeah looking for something out over the plate. One and one to Encarnacion. He reached on an air in the fourth, and that followed the Bautista walk. They both scored on Smoke's double. Marcelo strikes out in Canacion to end the inning. That's four strikeouts for the Red Sox and starter. We'll go to the six, and here comes the home hardware cleanup crew brought to you by Natura. Home hardware's exclusive line of safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products.
watch every out-of-market game live in HD on more than 400 devices with MLB.tv Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more every night on every device. Visit BlueJays.com for more details. Great way to keep up with what's going on in the pennant races, Buck. Barry, there's a lot going on, that's for sure. And the Blue Jays have a full one lead here as the Sox are batting in the sixth. Look around baseball, the Yankees and Mets are tied at one at the end of five at City Field. Ground ball, Smoke has a kick off his glove. He stays with it, but it bounces away from him. Brock Holt reaches. Should be an air on Smoke. That, that would be ball, his fourth. That ball took a real tricky hop again to Smoke. It's going to be to his backhand. It looked like it hit the seam and came up on him. This will be a perfect shot of it. You see that ball come up? And it handcuffed him, and he almost had a shot at it when he came back to it. Watch, he's going to reach down for it, and it comes up and hits him on the wrist. Tough error. If they do give him an error. They gave him a base hit. They took that bad hop into consideration. Lead off single for Brock Holt. I think Smoke would have been all right. When he went after that ball once it hit off his wrist, but it took a lot of spin and it bounced away from him. Bogart singled to right his last time up. Hit a breaking ball, it was up in the zone and just stayed on it and drove it to right. 0 oh, 2. 0 oh, 2. He got some tough lefties coming up, so that's Brett Cecil warming up to the pen. He was actually throwing when this inning started. Stroman once again freezing that base runner at first. He did that back in the third inning. And that helped Russell Martin throw out Mookie Betts trying to steal second. Conversation right here is where Marcus Stroman is in this ball game. He's got a lead. We're in the sixth. Line drive to Goins. That should be to Pennington to first. It is. 6-4-3 on the double play. Second double play. The Blue Jays have turned tonight. And that'll make the decision for Tom Gibbons a lot easier right there. Two outs, nobody on, and Ortiz coming up. So he's going to let Marcus Stroman pitch to him. This is Taylor Maid. As soon as going catches it, but free, plenty of time to finish it off. Blue Jays turned seven double plays in the three game series in Atlanta. They have two tonight. You know I think that's a big difference we have seen with Marcus second half of his season last year where he de-emphasized the strikeout. And what that'll do is certainly it'll engage your infielders but it also will keep the pitch count down. And well, using that two seamer now gets him a lot of easy outs. He had a new pitch that he could work with a little two seamer. Where you can get the ground outs. And he learned how to take something off that two seamer. David Ortiz talked to me about Strowman when he knew he was going to make his first start at Yankee Stadium. He said, What a shot in the arm that will be for the Blue Jays to get Strowman back in the rotation. He goes after it. He went around. He has tremendous respect for what he saw from Strowman last year. And he said, man, if they could put Strowman in the rotation along with Price, that's a big boost. And anytime David Ortiz talks, you got to listen. He knows a little something about hitting. One and two. Fouls it off. Well, Ortiz understands what it is. Talking postseason baseball. He's been through it with the Red Sox. He's won the World Series. And he says, man, you've got to have good arms. You've got to have power arms in the postseason. Hitters are tired. They wear down at the end of the season. You get a fresh arm like Strowman, that could be the difference. Twenty four year old Marcus Stroman against five hundred and one home run David Ortiz. That 
caught the umpire right up under the mask. Ball in the dirt, kicked off of Martin's glove, and Mark Ripiger got hit underneath his mask, and he's going to take some time to regroup. Watch the ball bounce straight up. Yeah, right underneath that mask. Russell Martin's going to go out and give him a little bit more time. You see him a little courtesy right there. What Marcus Stroman is trying to do to Ortiz, he's really trying to mess up his timing. Ortiz has got a great timing mechanism, a lot like Jose Bautista, where he lifts that leg and, and reads the pitch. What he's trying to do is trying to throw more change-ups and off-speed pitches, trying to get Ortiz to commit a little bit earlier. That's a strike. Russell Martin couldn't believe that. They had gone through the entire arsenal of pitches and he threw strike three. Full count. Shaw's next. If Ortiz can reach. Go ahead. Strowman out of the six. He gets a double play and a line drive. His first start at Roger Center last year. He went seven and two in 11 starts here at home. Offensively with the triple and some great defense he's made today. Fans, you can go to sportsnet.ca following every Blue Jays game and vote for today's play of the game. Of course, sportsnet.ca, your home for everything Blue Jays. But There's a good chance Goins will get it, and you'll take another look at it off the bat of Ortiz. Positioned perfectly right where David Ortiz hit that line drive right at him. They've turned a couple of double plays in the infield also. Justin Smoke is one for two. Smoke had a two run double in the fourth, hit it to the wall in center field. Gives him 51 RBIs for the season. That's the second highest total in his career. He had 51 RBIs for the Seattle Mariners in 2012. He had 19 home runs that year. He had 55. That's his career high in 2011. He drives this one into center, and that's going to drop for a base hit. Justin Smoke for the leadoff single. He's two for three. I wonder if he did that in the as few of it, as at bats as he has had this season. No, he did. He had 489 at bats when he drove in 55. He now has 259. Almost half the at bats. There you go. He's had very productive season. He's had a very productive night. That's his second hit. Russell Martin is 0 for 2 so far tonight. Blue Jays now with six hits. The Red Sox have matched him in that department. 
Both teams with six hits, but the Blue Jays have a 4 1 lead over Boston. Rick Porcello, three and one since coming off the disabled list. He was on the DL with tricep tendonitis. Porcello is making his fourth start of the season against the Blue Jays. He had a real good start back in April at Fenway Park. Two hits over seven innings allowed just a single run. He was pushed to the limit in his last start. That was against Tampa Bay. Through a season high 118 pitches against Tampa five days ago. He had one consecutive starts with that win for the first time since May 5th. He beat the Blue Jays on the 7th of September and then beat Tampa Bay his last time out. One and two. Tapped foul. We're in the bottom of the sixth. The Blue Jays took a one nothing lead in the third. Scored a RBI ground out off the bat of Ben Revere. Kevin Pillar had doubled to start that in. Smoke had a two run double in the fourth. Goins delivered with a triple. The baseball, but Rutledge can't make a play on it. Holt just couldn't get his balance and get much on the throw. He one hopped the second baseman, Rutledge, and he couldn't dig it out of the dirt. He went pretty far to get that ball, but you're right, his momentum takes him. Watch as Brock gets to the ball, and you can see he's going to try and stay on his feet. He doesn't. Then he has to throw from his backside. And it just can't get enough on it, nor could he be accurate. And they tried to pick it at second base, so it'll be an infield hit. Yeah, it sure is an infield hit. He just couldn't do anything about it. It took him so far to his left that it took him out of his balance. Ryan Goins, a soxer looking for the bunt. I don't think the Blue Jays are going to bunt right here. They got a lot of confidence in the bottom third of their order. Yeah, you might be bunting right into an out because you don't have the proper guys on the bases. I think the type of speed that you need. It would have to be almost a perfect bunt. So why not let him swing away? He's had a triple tonight. Well, another thing he's done very well, just like he did on that pitch. He's patient. He's looking for a good pitch to hit now. Rick Jacoby says that's the most improved aspect of his approach at the plate. Patience. Goins is filling in for Tulowitzki at shortstop, and Troy is back from Boston. He flew up to Boston to see a specialist who gave him an opinion on that shoulder injury. And George Poulos, of course, is going to be very instrumental in Tulowitzki getting back to the field. Blue Jays miss his presence. Bouncing ball up the middle. That's past Bogarts and Smoke will stop at third. Jackie Bradley Jr. dropped the ball, but Smoke had already stopped at third. Ryan Goins bounces one through the infield for his second hit. Sometimes that baseball just has eyes, doesn't it? Goins with another at bat, and look how many defenders has a chance at this one. Up the middle, out of the reach of Bogarts, no chance really to score smoke. You don't want to run into an out. Jackie Bradley really throws well. 
So Ryan Goins now has a couple of base hits. The bases are loaded for Kevin Pillar. Porcello's in a jam. And he's going to get a little visit from the pitching coach, Carl Willis. The Red Sox bullpen has gotten up. Matt Barnes is up in that bullpen, a hard throwing right hander. This is Carl Willis, maybe just to give him a little bit more time to get loose down in that bullpen. There is Barnes loosening up. You mentioned sometimes good fortune falls your way, and I think. Goins was rewarded with that infield hit because of the approach he had at the plate. He forced Porcello to throw him a strike, and even though it was a good sinker ball, the baseball gods <laughs> took care of Brian Goins, and he gets an infield hit through the middle of the diamond. Well, that'll load up the bases with nobody out, and Kevin Pillar has got a chance to deliver a knockout punch here. Blue Jays have a 4 1 lead. The Jays have hit six home runs this season with the bases loaded. Edwin Encarnacion has hit three grand slams himself. Bautista Smoke and Devin Travis have the other three. Ground ball. Bogarts is going to come home. They get the force out on Smoke. And that's all they'll get. That's the first out of the inning. Six two on the four south but bases remain loaded but now there's one out. Now the middle of the diamond will move back in their conventional double play depth. The corners will stay in. They will read the ball off the bat. If it's hit sharply they'll probably go around the horn. Slowly they'll come home. This is where Cliff Pennington I think his veteran influence right here should really make Porcello work. He got a pitch up in the zone. That's what he wants. Something he can hit to the outfield. Well, last night it was an 0-2 pitch, and it was up just like those last two pitches from Porcello. And look what he does with it. Turns on that one. It's the bat head out. It's a big three run home run for the Blue Jays. The big hit in another Jays win last night. The big hit for Pennington. He also had a big home run in New York. Pennington was an everyday player for Oakland in 2010, 11, and 12. He was their everyday shortstop. He got to the postseason in 2012, played in the division series against the Tigers. Bounced, and that's going to score a run. Martin is in to score that breaking ball. Bounced in front of home, and Swihart had it go off his chest protector. He has bounced a few of those breaking balls tonight, and Lake Swihart has done a heck of a job blocking them and keeping them in front of him. But this one, he just can't. The ball comes up on him. Bounces off the chest protector all the way back to the backstop. And AJ is going to get a run. Infield is drawn in now with one out. Fly ball. That's deep enough to score Goins. He's tagging at third. And he'll come home. The throw will go to third base. And Pennington is picked up. Another RBI. For Pennington, that's his 10th with the Blue Jays on the season. That'll give him 20. Good piece of hitting right there. The veteran got something up, and you can see his swing was a swing where he was trying to elevate that baseball and got it into the outfield deep enough for another run. Well, the wild pitch contributing to the two run inning. Martin scored on the wild pitch and 
Goins moved up to third, scored on the sack fly. 6 1 Blue Jays. Marcella has thrown 110 pitches. Liam Hendricks loosening up for the Blue Jays. Marcus Stroman. Six strong innings. Evans looking where they are in the Red Sox lineup. Bouncing ball up the middle. They better hurry. Just in time to get Revere, but the Blue Jays score two runs in the bottom of the six. They score in a wild pitch and a sacrifice fly. Six one. Marcus Stroman coming back out to start the seventh. Last week and a fantastic job. And speaking of minor baseball, small major league baseball, attention to all baseball coaches. Learn the Blue Jays' way of baseball from members of the major league staff, minor league coaches, and alumni. You can attend the Blue Jays' national coaching clinic January 8th through 10th at Rogers Center. Learn baseball tips and drills that can take you back to your local baseball association. Go to bluejays.com slash baseball academy for more. Buck. Thank you very much, Larry Davis. In fact, you participate in that baseball academy. It's a very, very good opportunity for coaches. That's right. The last two uh, seasons, uh, two years I've been there, the coaches sign up now because it uh, it gets filled up very quickly. You can learn so much from so many of the alumni and the coaches and the instructors. They've been outstanding. So uh, very worthwhile, I think, for youth coaches. Travis Shaw starts things off for the Red Sox. We saw Sandy Alomar Sr. today in the clubhouse, and he was raving about the Tournament 12 and how successful it was, and how many good ball players they saw over the course of the games. He said they had a lot of good games, a lot of great young talent, and a lot of opportunities for some of these young Canadian players to play in front of some the prominent coaches in North America. Said he saw a lot of very good middle infielders over the last few days. Boy, that little cut fastball is a beauty. Marcus Stroman has allowed one run on six hits as he starts the seventh inning. Jam. Bowens has to wait on it. Unloads in a hurry in time. One out. Let's check it with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update for us.
Masahiro Tanaka, Steven Matz, the starting pitching matchup in that game. And this is going to be a tough series for the Yankees. The Mets have all of a sudden become the number one team in New York. Tanaka has given up two runs on five and Steven Matz just one run on seven hits. It'll be Michael Pineda and Noah Syndergaard tomorrow afternoon. And then in the series finale, it'll be the Sunday night ESPN game. CC Sabathia and Matt Harvey. A great pitching matchup. And the Yankees will play that Sunday night game before coming to Toronto for the Monday night opener of their three game series. Didn't they rejig their pitching staff? For that series, and then for us, Adam Warren will open up against David Price on Monday night. Luis Severino, the rookie, will go up against Marco Estrada, and Masahiro Tanaka and Marcus Stroman will wrap up the season series between the Blue Jays and the Yankees on Wednesday night. Marcus Stroman. Has thrown 94 pitches, and you bet they're going to have a short leash on him. He's ahead of Rusny Castillo, a ball and two strikes. Ground ball, another ground ball to go, and takes his time. Two down. Blake Swihart has one of the six Red Sox hits tonight. There's a liner to right. Bautista is there. What a quick inning for Marcus Stroman. Stroman threw seven innings here in his first start at Rogers Center. The Blue Jays have a 6 1 lead. Giles, and if you can't make it to the game like these folks did, the new Sportsnet app has you covered. Keep up the speed with everything Blue Jays. Don't miss a pitch with our in-depth live game tracker. Plus, latest news, videos, and interviews on Canada's team. Download the new Sportsnet app today. Your biggest fans, guys. Well, we appreciate that very much. We want to thank you for that, and we know it's Ron's birthday as well. And Ron, you're on the wrong side of the sign, big boy. That's you. I know it's your birthday, but you got to get on the other side of the sign. <laughs> Thank you very much for all your support, and we are just pleased and honored to be involved with the Blue Jays. It's been a great season and a lot of fun. Matt Barnes will take over for Rick Porcello. This will be his 26th appearance of this season.
Off the end of the bat, up the middle. That's going to be tough. It'll be a base hit for Donaldson. Josh Donaldson is two for four. Sneaks one right over the mound. Blue Jays have had success against Barnes this year. He's thrown four to third inning. It's the 12th hit they've had against him. He's got a good arm. He's been up and down a few times this season for the for the Red Sox. Jose Pautista, and he has certainly put a lot of power into his season this year. He's had another perfect night. One for one with a pair of walks. Blue Jays hitting 478 against Barnes in his previous four outings. Pat, we were around the batting cage when the Blue Jays were at Fenway Park to start this road trip in the Hall of Famer Dennis Eckersley. Who does television work for the Red Sox says, man, this lineup is impossible. He said, you've got so many good hitters in your lineup. There's a high fly ball to right. Bookie bets over into foul ground. Gets there and he makes the catch. One out. During the plumbing, heating, and electrical expert sale, only at Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Went out for Edwin Encarnacion. Donaldson singled. He's at first. But Eckersley, his point was, you can have. The greatest stuff all night long pitching against the Blue Jays, but sooner or later you're going to make a mistake, and it doesn't make any difference where you are in the lineup. Somebody's going to hurt you. They just wear you down. Every pitch, you, you, I don't want to say you have to be perfect, but every at bat becomes so emotionally and mentally draining and physically draining as you try to work your way through this lineup. Once you get down to the bottom of the lineup, those guys can hurt you too. Yeah, there's so much balance in this lineup, and they've done a great job of bringing in Smoke, a switch hitter. Bringing in Colabella, who's had a terrific season. Pennington, he's a switch hitter. A lot of balance in the lineup, up and down. Devin Travis, we had a shot of him. He, he wasn't. Uh, he hasn't played for over a month. You and I were talking to the TV crew of the Atlanta Braves, Chip Carey and Joe Simpson, and they were. Marveling at this lineup, and he said, "You don't have two of your starters in there, two Lewitsky or your DH." And they were still impressed with the lineup that the Blue Jays threw out there in Atlanta. This is popped up behind home plate. Swinehart, the catcher, first baseman Shaw calls him off and makes the catch. Bautista pops out, and Conacion pops out to the first baseman. But think about that. No, no two Lewitsky, no Devin Travis. No DH when the team was in Atlanta. Those are some big sticks, and they still scored a lot of runs. Six more runs tonight. They have scored 812 runs for the season. And there is a constant baseball conversation going on on that Blue Jays bench. Pitchers are involved, hitters are involved, and there's always somebody talking about the subtleties of the game. Justin Smokes had a nice night. Mark Burley's veteran presence has been a positive influence on Marcus Stroman. Justin Smoke, a two run double. That came in the fourth.
for another off speed pitch. Get used to it. They might show you a fastball here or there, but they're going to be throwing change ups and curveballs to smoke. Here comes another one. There goes Donaldson. Swing and a miss, and the inning is over. Smoke strikes out. Barnes gives up a leadoff single and nothing more. Marcus Stroman. Looks like he's packing up and he had a good night. Liam Hendricks coming on to pitch the eighth. Started through 96 pitches, went seven innings, scattered six hits over those seven innings, and he allowed one earned run, walked one, and struck out three. Overall, another terrific start for Marcus Stroman. Yeah, seven innings. He improved on that in five last time out, and just had the one bad inning. Much better tonight against a, a very good hitting Boston Red Sox team. He will turn it over to Liam Hendricks for the 52nd time. Liam. Comes into the ball game. Look at that earned run average at two and a half. He's undefeated with five wins. He has also thrown 59 to third inning and he has struck out 63 batters with only 10 walks all season long. It'll be 8 9 1 for the Red Sox in the eighth inning. Blue Jays are up 6 to 1. Hendricks has had a terrific season. His first full season working out of the bullpen. Rutledge is behind quickly 0 and 2. Hendricks is pitching for the eighth time against the Red Sox. This is the 17th game these two teams have played this season. He's pitched to a 239 opponent's batting average against the Sox. 97. A lot of players around the league were saying, "Who is this guy?" I mean, they knew Liam when he was a starter, first with Minnesota, and then with Kansas City. He started some games here with the Blue Jays, and he wasn't this kind of power guy coming out of the pen for an inning, was he? Not at all. And he really has a tight breaking ball. Again, in our conversation with David Ortiz in Boston, he said. You guys got that bullpen now. You got Osun, you got Sanchez, and you got Hawkins, and now you got that guy from Minnesota who used to be a starter. He's <laughs> nasty. <laughs> and, he, and he was referred to when he was a starter. He just didn't throw this hard. But you see a lot of those swings where hitters will start and stop, get surprised by the velocity. It's on him. It's on him quick. He's got a nice, free, easy. Motion all of a sudden that ball is right there. You can see that check swing from Rutledge fooled by that fastball. Mm. 
What a pitch. 98 at the knees. Hendricks taking over for Marcus Stroman, who had a terrific first start here at home. Well, we can show you all the great stuff and the great pitches, but we want to show you the emotion and the excitement. We talked about it at the beginning of the show, how this guy's excited and he gets into these types of games, and he, he really relishes and cherishes these types of big stages and, and the excitement of these big games, and he was doing it again tonight. 47,126 got to see Marcus Stroman do his thing in his first start of the season at home. What a terrific crowd. Liam Hendricks pitched. On Tuesday down in Atlanta. He threw 12 pitches in his inning of work, had a couple of strikeouts against the Braves. There's that hard breaking ball in the dirt. Two and two to Jackie Bradley Jr. He has struck out twice. The center Pilar drifting back makes the catch. Two down. This copyright is telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Marcus Stroman in line for the win tonight. This was his fourth career start against the Red Sox. He has a 1.26 earned run average against Boston in those four starts. They've hit 192 against him, and his whip is .87. Give me your best. I'll show you my best. Aaron Sanchez loosening up. Looks like he's going to get some work tonight. Stroman's numbers against Boston coming into this game through three starts. Only John Smoltz had a better ERA over three starts than Stroman. That's a base hit for Betts. Pass Donaldson down the left field line. That'll be a two out double. Let's check in with Jamie Kimball. Well, you got to give the Mets front office high marks. They went out and picked up Uribe and Kelly Johnson from the Atlanta Braves. They traded for Ioannis Cespedes with the Detroit Tigers, and David Wright got healthy and came back all at the same time, and that really energized their offense. We are talking about that most runs in a game post All Star game this year. The Blue Jays have the highest. The Mets are right behind them at five and a half runs a game. Red Sox are third. The Yankees are fourth. And don't look now, but the Texas Rangers, they're fifth. And they have moved into first place in the West. Rock Holt, the third baseman, singled off Smoltz. Off Smoltz's glove.
That's it. He goes to first to complete the strikeout. Hendricks strikes out two in his inning of work. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth at 6 1 Blue Jays. Now time for Blue Jays Central uptick. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zong. Newfoundland and one in Vancouver, BC, and they have been making their way across Canada to celebrate Canada's team with a 22-day countdown to the final home game of the season. You can jump on social media, share your passion with hashtag 22 Blue Jays. And there's a picture of one of our vans, and that was the one that was making its way west from the east coast and what a lot of fun it is checking in with all the fans we have of the blue jays right across the country and it has been a blast so far but well, i'll come to a head when i get here to not just at the end of this great trek across canada they will meet in the middle if you will we're in the bottom of the eighth inning new pitcher in for the red sox is he henbury he was a tread deadline pickup from san francisco last july for Jake Peavy. Got him with, for Jake Peavy. Edwin Escobar also came over here. This is his first full season with the Red Sox, and he's got a good arm. Good fastball, good breaking ball. Blue Jays have seen him in the past. And the thing about him, he's only given up one walk over his last 12 appearances. So with a power arm, he's got some control with it. Henry. Appeared in nine games in 2013 with the Giants and then came over, got in just six games with the Red Sox last year. This is his 15th appearance, as Pat mentioned. Russell Martin singled in and scored in the sixth. Russell is one for three tonight. Hit on the ground. Bogart's near second base. One down. Driving the game is presented by the all new 2016 Honda Pilot, proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. We have talked so much about Ryan Gowen's glove work. Well, how about the bat? He's going to take this high changeup from Rick Porcello and he's going to bang it off the right field wall. And by the time the Red Sox run this ball down, Ryan Gowen's is going to have our drive of the game, which is going to be a triple with the head for a slide, the dive in the third base. Ryan Gowen's. Getting it done tonight. Goins has three triples this season. Blue Jays have 14 as a team. Ryan is two for three tonight. Drove in a run with that triple. Scored a run in the sixth on the sack fly off the bat of Cliff Pennington. The breaking ball for a strike. Ryan is playing in his 114th game this season. First extended opportunity he's had to play in the big leagues. Came in with 327 at bats. It's now up to 330 at bats. Most by far that he has had. 
And with each at bat, each day that goes by, you can see the confidence growing. Well, he's getting reinforcement of the instructing he's getting from Eric Cohen's and from Brooke Jacoby. They say this works, trust me. But now he's seeing it. He has a chance to test it out. Good pitch, 97 on the corner. Embry strikes out Goins to down. Sometimes you just got to tip your cap to the pitcher. <laughs> that was a pretty good pitch. You mentioned the speed, but where it was to a blazer right on that outside corner. Kevin Pilar scored the first run of the ball game in the third. He had leadoff double. He was sacrificed to third base by Cliff Pennington, and he scored on a ground out by Ben Revere. Batting 262. A respectable number in his first full season in the big leagues. Look out, Blake. <laughs> the pitcher slipped on his landing foot and he may have twisted his knee, but he lost his footing as he went to plant that landing foot and watch where the ball ends up. There's the slip as his knee caught. It locked on him. That's what happened. His foot didn't move at all. His knee locked up on him. And it looked like it might have hyperextended that front knee when he hit the turf and the dirt area in front of home plate. You want to have that solid surface. One more time. I don't think he slips. You see, it looked like his knee just locked up on him and he bailed out. Kind of got that weight off that knee. It was a very unusual landing on that front knee. I think he's got a lot of doubts. I don't know if he should throw yeah, this pitch. Yeah, I, I don't. Don't throw it 100 percent because I'll tell you, if you're thinking about that, that landing knee, you got some doubt. You're going to start changing that arm angle. I worry for him and I worry for the batter too. Yeah, and you saw where that pitch went, and Blake Swihart, he barely got out of the way of it. But you're right. If you have any doubts in your mind, it's going to be. Shaky. And he says he's okay. The all new 2016 Honda Pilot. Proud partner and official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Heath Hembry for a couple pitches and Pronounced himself fit, so he will continue. One ball, two strikes to Kevin Pilar. Look out. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, he's got doubts in his mind, and now if I'm Kevin Pilar, I am treading very lightly in the batter's box. I, I mentioned that uh, play in Minnesota once. I hit a ball off of the pitcher's fingers, and he said he was okay. The next pitch hit Joe Carter right in the face. And, and whenever a pitcher has those type of doubts and those problems, you worry about the guy hitting. There's a fly ball into center. Bradley Jr. is there. Pilar's retired. We will go to the ninth. First of three against the Red Sox, and the Blue Jays have a 6 1 lead. Aaron Sanchez coming out of the pen to wrap it up.
Heavyweight Championship against Sting, Seth Rollins must also put the United States title on the line against John Cena. WWE Night of Champions, live on the WWE Network. Subscribe today for only $11.99 a month. Call your TV provider or visit WWE.com slash Canada. Buck, I'm assuming this is not the Sting that was in the police. <laughs> I don't think it is. He would be a little bit too old for that kind of action. We made it to the ninth inning, and Aaron Sanchez has come out of the bullpen. Liam Hendricks had a couple of strikeouts in his inning of work. Now Sanchez is on. Aaron worked three days ago and picked up that sixth loss of the season to make his season record seven and six with a 310 earned run average. It was an Andleton Simmons single off of Aaron. That was the walk off winner in Atlanta. Middle of the order for Boston, Bogarts, Ortiz, and Travis Shaw. And Bogarts, one for three tonight. Coming up on Sportsnet Central, here's Brendan Dunlap and Carly Agro. Thank you very much, Brendan. That's all going to come up right after this game, so make sure you stay tuned for Sportsnet Central. They'll be breaking down the Yankees, of course, who trail the Mets 4 1, bottom of the eighth. Kansas City and the Tigers are tied at one. They, too, are in the eighth. It's the top of the eighth in Detroit. Verlander and Cueto, the starters in that ball game. Of course, that has significance for the Blue Jays for the best record in the American League. Verlander. Into the eighth, he's allowed a run on four hits, struck out six. Cueto has bounced back. He's had a good outing tonight. He gave he up two, a run. Allowed just one run on seven hits. I think that was in the first inning. He gave up a run on a Miguel Cabrera base hit. Kansas City scored in the fifth, and they are now in the top of the eighth. David Ortiz behind Aaron Sanchez, one and two. That's going to be a base hit. Ortiz hits it off the end of the bat. Playing him in the shift. A little squiver up the third baseline. Well, that will make up for the line drive he had back in the sixth inning where he lined right out to Ryan Goins in the shift. And that's Gibby given the sign to play behind the runner. That run doesn't mean anything. The Red Sox have eight hits. Blue Jays have nine. Blue Jays have turned two double plays tonight. We got Bogarts on a 6 4 3 double play in the sixth. Got Ortiz on a 4 5 3 double play in the fourth. Well, they got the right pitcher on the mound, I think, if they are going to end this on another ground ball double play. Sanchez's fastball is as good as anyone's, and the movement on it is the same. Tough to get the ball in the air against Aaron. Turned 23 on Canada Day, July 1st. Marcus Stroman of Sires is 24. Osuna, the closer, is 20. 
a terrific core of young pitchers in the middle of this Blue Jays pitching staff. Martin does a good job of getting the glove on that ball in the dirt. Three and one now to Shaw. The Red Sox have had a disappointing season, but the young players like Mookie Betts and Xander Bogarts certainly bright spots in an otherwise disappointing season. We've got some young players that, that other organizations really coveted. They kept asking for those guys in trades. Smoke with a terrific play. Diving to the glove side takes a hit away from Shaw. That's why you saw John Gibbons tell Justin Smoke, hey, that run doesn't mean anything. Play behind him for that reason right there. Take away a base hit. If you're holding them on, that's a single to right field, but you play behind them. And you take away a hit. David Ortiz thought that was a pretty good play, too. Seven thousand one twenty six. His second game of the season. He is the story, I think, of the game tonight. Seven innings, six hits, just one earned run, a walk, and three strikeouts. He was in control against a very hot team, the Boston Red Sox. There, told you that they have scored the third most runs since the All Star break, averaging the game. The Blue Jays shut him down with some great pitching. Stroman, Hendricks, and Sanchez to win game one. Tonight it was Justin Smoke with the big bat, complimented by Ryan Goins. Cook Pennington and Ben Revere drove in a couple of runs. 6 1 Blue Jays. We'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Here's Sportsnet Central.